We're gonna start working on a Articat. Uh, basically, this is the same as a Sidewinder. This is the uh, their Thundercat 9000 Turbo. Um, what we're gonna do is general maintenance, but it is basically, other than some plastic, this is identical to the Sidewinder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the shields off, the exhaust off, we're going to change the oil on this machine. We're going to replace the track, which is going to give us the time to pull the skid out, go through all the bearings, make sure the skid is in operation, perfect shape, check the slides, uh, pull the chain case apart, and check all the bearings. Basically, just a general maintenance overhaul that a person should probably do you know, oil changes depending on mileage, a couple thousand miles, but this, on this particular chassis, I would recommend probably 25 to 3,000 miles a person should inspect the bearings, uh, the gear, and what's happening with the shaft. We're going to also install a, a Barna Parts locker on it and uh, see what's going on with that particular shaft. But as we rip it apart, I'll take more video. Now here we are, we got the side panels off, the hood off, the lowers, we're go we drilled out all the rivets and we're going to put in inserts later, that's also on another video. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, pull the muffler off so I can get to the case and then on this side here we're going to pull the shield off the caliper and pull the brakes and stuff out, pull the C-clip off this side, and uh, we should be able to then unbolt on the inside up underneath the tunnel. Should be three bolts up there. Once we get to that point, I'll show you some pictures. We just pulled out all the bolts and the gasket. You gotta make sure the gasket will slip and fall behind. And you're going to need to pull that spring out. Once that spring is off, you should be able to basically just lift that muffler right off. And then we can get to the rest of our work. Ready to pull the skid out. We're going to loosen up and release the springs with a 10 millimeter on the rail side, 13 millimeter on the back. Then we can, once both springs are released, then we can pull the 13 millimeter and 12 millimeter will hold the back of the lug. And we can drop this down and then release the shaft off the front. And then I'll take a little video of it once it's down and we'll pull it out of the track. And then the rear, we have to do a 22 with a wrench on the back side. Just like that. We'll do both sides. All right, you can see we're almost ready to pull the skid out. Uh, one thing that really helps is to pivot, release the springs, release them off the back cam blocks, and just set the springs on the adjuster blocks. Push the skid forward. Once that front, front bar is out, uh, which is basically just pull a, the bolt on each side, once you pull the skid back, you can actually reach underneath the track and pull the bar out. And this is what the bar looks like. Right there. Pretty simple. And then you'll have enough slack in the track that you can easily get it through and pull it out. And there you have it. Now that the skid is out, we're going to drain the oil tank. Uh, this particular snowmobile's got a blown seal. You can see there's a lot of seepage, a lot of oil residue. So we're gonna put a barn apart seal on there and I'll show you how to put that together later. But right now we're gonna drain the oil out of here. Take the case half off on the chain case side real slowly. 
so we can uh, get the oil out of the case and then pull it off and start inspecting. Unplug the reverse. Gonna unplug the speedo pickup sensor down below. And then we're gonna take out, actually this is the reverse um, sensor. Unplug the reverse completely. Nice. All right, we're gonna pull off the reverse. So we're pulling out the last screw. And you'll see it cocks a little bit. Make sure you put it on very similar to that. And you'll see in a second here, once we pull that apart, let's pull that straight back. And you see the reason it cocks is because it sits in a detent. So it puts a little bit of pressure to make sure this thing is fully shifted in neutral when the power is off. So the next thing we're gonna do is pull this little spring, this little holder for the shifter, and then the shift puck will come out. And then we're gonna pull this guy apart here. And this screw out here. release these and then we'll pull this one last hose off oh yeah there we go okay we're gonna go around and take all the torx bolts out all the way around once those are out then what you're gonna do is on the bottom I uh, usually leave the top ones in just a little bit so then I can tip out the case a little bit to get the oil out because there's no drain plug. All right, now that all the bolts are out, I'm going to pull the case off. Make sure you pay attention to that little guy right there. We'll put that right back on there for the time being. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all of the gears and everything out and set them on the table just like it's put in the in the machine that way i can keep track of the orientation how everything goes in i've had enough of these apart it's really easy to take care of but it's a it's an easy thing for a newbie to be able to put it back together the correct way pull the lower clip center down just as if you pulled it off yep. and then we go over here and we'll pull the reverse out take the pins reverse and then one thing we take a look at when we pull the reverse is the, the little fork plastics are on there looks good We're going to take off the top snap ring. And then from there we can pull off the, the lower gear and the upper gear together. And we dropped out one of our washers. So we'll set that right back down. And that'll be, other than one of the washers falling into the oil pan, that's about pulling the chain case apart. And then we'll pull the, the tensioner off and we're gonna actually spot, spot weld these uh, bolts. Cause as you can see here, let me pull this off here. You can see the inside bolt just fell out. There, there just fell out. The inside bolt fell out of the tensioner. I'll get right back to that in a second. 
So here you can see the bolt missing. And it looked like she was rubbing on the back here for a little while, but luckily it didn't fall out and take out the case. And this has just a tiniest bit. To me, it's not worth changing. We're going to pull out the three 10 millimeters on the brake caliper side. You have to go through the tunnel just about by the drivers uh, and we'll uh, we'll pull those out now okay once the bolts are out and the c-clip is off on this side the brake pads are out if you start to rock it back and forth you can basically pull it right off And as you can see down in there, you can see that the bearing was spun. Uh, just a little tiny bit. I'd say it's about 15 thousandths off of that shaft, but we'll double check once we pull it off. What we're going to have to do is probably have that spray metaled, uh, depending on how much tolerance is taken off. You can see once the caliper comes out, or the disc comes out, you can see that there's a groove war in it. That's a telltale sign that the inner race was spinning on the shaft. And when you pull that off, if you look on there, you can see it's, it's eating the shaft because of the poor tolerance between the bearing race, the inner bearing race and the shaft. Okay, as you push this shaft you get over to the uh, clutch side, you're gonna have to loop the track above. And then once you get it up, then you'll have to fight it a little bit to get the, to get it off the lugs and you should be able to get the shaft to drop be back in there it's got to go all the way to the clutch, clutch side yep, just like that and it'll fall right out now once you get her out then you can really inspect the shaft really good and you can see on here how much is taken off Okay, we're going to pull out the bearing on this lower unit or drive shaft here. What I do is I take the flat blade screwdriver and there's a little notch in there. It's really kind of, it's like a spring pin or a spring, spring clip, I guess you could say. See, once you kind of pry out that little piece. And you just kind of walk it around and it basically comes right out like that. Now, <clears throat> for me, the best way to do this is I'm going to put a little heat in here. I'm going to put a little heat around the, around this to increase, you know, the aluminum will absorb the heat and it'll open up that tolerance between the bearing and the, and the race so don't don't heat up the race just go around go around a bunch of times until it's getting more than hot to the touch And then I'll uh, I use my little hammer hammer puller, but um, sometimes it just falls right out. But you know we want to want to grab onto that inner race a little bit. Tighten that up on there and she pops right out basically just like that. <clears throat> I'll set that on the side, clean this up and then we're going to pop out 
this seal here too, which I have a seal puller. Uh, basically it's a, it'll just reach in there and usually just, just give it a good yank like that. It'll hook an outside race and uh, pop it right out. Just like that. So then we'll clean up the new one and I'll use the driver uh, bearing driver and I'll drive that one back in and then if I can keep this heated up good that bearing will drop right in and I'll show you that in a little bit once I get this all cleaned up All right, we got it cleaned up I'm gonna put a little bit of heat in here again Just to open up all absorb the heat Open up the bearing race, open up the tolerance, and it actually just helps put it together. And once she cools down, I actually do one better. And I'll put sometimes I'll put the bearings in the in the um, freezer, and um, basically uh, get get brought, drop the temperature of them a little bit. Oh, one thing to note before I actually put that into the, uh, there's a side with the spring. That goes to the gear side or the bearing side. Let me get this uh, situated and then I'll come right back. All right, we got the uh, seal in. Uh, you needed a little bit bigger bearing or bearing and seal driver to get it started. Uh, basically, I went with that one first to get it started. Then I finished it into the, the shoulder with that one. So I'm gonna heat it up a little bit again. Just around the outside edges here. Open that tolerance up. It'll be it'll be very warm to the touch. Basically, this little guy here should almost drop right in if it's straight. But you can also use your bearing driver and give it a few taps. Um, this bearing driver right here. Should have had this put together ahead of time, but because now she's cooling down too fast. Let me give this guy a little. Yeah. It goes right in. <clears throat> um, sometimes, like I said, if you can get the heat the right temperature and it opens up, sometimes you just, it basically drops right in. And then you gotta get this bad boy started in there, which is a real pain in the butt. You gotta split it open in the back. Basically, get it started in the race. And then you just kinda walk it around. And it will snap right in. And that's it, that's what holds the bearing in. And there's the new bearing in there. All right, it's as simple as that. I'm gonna show you how to do the great caliper side shortly. All right, we're gonna try to do this bearing on this side. <clears throat> um, I already did the seal for the shaft. Uh, this is pretty simple. You just put this on a flat surface and drive it out, drive it out the back. Uh, you know, put it on a vise, make sure it's close to the seal, tap it out slow, and then put this on a flat vise and tap it back down with basically bearing drivers and seal drivers, and it'll, it'll come down right, nice and flush. <clears throat> this has a retainer just like the other side. I actually popped it loose already, so we'll pull this guy off. And then this is a very similar deal that I do 
I, I'm going to put this up on the block here. Um, because I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to heat it up. I have to heat it up and drive it down a little bit. Sometimes if you get it, you ought to race warm enough, but you got, you know, don't go too crazy. You know, you don't want to, you just want to bring this temperature up a few degrees to allow the tolerance to be bigger. I'll make sure my camera is uh, showing this good. There. Maybe up a little more. Give you an idea that we're pretty warm so I'll make sure you got enough room here to give it a few good whacks she's already dropping down no problem I should drop right out actually probably be able to hold on to it like that actually that's pretty cold so just give it yep She's coming out. She's coming out really good. You can see she's already popping out. <clears throat> Sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of support. Right like that. Drop that guy there. Basically, it pops right out like that, and, and it doesn't take a lot of heating it, or uh, hitting on it. If you can, like I said, if you can get the temperature right, it'll drop perfectly. So basically, put it back together uh, after cleaning it up. You know, you clean it up really good. Make sure the race and stuff is all cleaned out really good, and then uh, I like to. Heat it up again, and uh, basically just drop it in. And get that in a race nice and hot with the bearing out. Uh, she's cleaned up pretty good. There. I'll get the new bearing ready, and I'll turn her back on when when she's all done and ready to drop in. All right, I'm gonna warm. I'm gonna get. I'm going to attempt to see if this will drop in. I'm going to warm this up really good now that the bearing is out. You can see I'm holding it with my hand. So the heat, you know, the heat's over here is where the bearing race is going to be. You know? And it's just basically warming up to the point where you almost can't touch it. And then I, I just toss the bearing in the freezer for a little bit. And she basically will... Drop right in. I'm gonna do it kind of quick. I might not have did it quick enough, but it's pretty close. I'll put her up on that bearing driver here and we'll give her a few taps just to get it where it needs to be since it didn't drop like I was hoping it would. So give me a second here. Switch on my bearing driver. And this is something you can get at Harbor Freight. 
This is something you can get at Harbor Freight. So you'll see the bearing just kind of dropped in part way, but I'm just going to make sure she's in all the way. Just like this. She should have dropped in all the way. So she might be just a smidge crooked in the race. She was just sitting there kind of crooked a little bit, so I had to give the outer race a tap. Yeah, no, she's going right in. She's a pretty good fit. You gotta give it some good hits. Uh, one, that's why I'm saying the heat and the cold. Actually, like I said, if you can get it exact, uh, or I shouldn't say exact, but right at the right temperature, that bearing literally will just fall right in there. You won't even have to beat on that outer race to get that thing to go in. So that's basically how that goes together. And then I'm going to put in, you know, this little guy here. Basically, it's the same thing as the other side. Um, you just get one side walking in. And then you walk it right around. And you like to have the this offset portion of it. You want to have it, because there's actually a cutout in this bear in this race. And you want to have this more up up in the up away from the bearing edge. There we go. Just like such. That's it. You can see this dissipates the heat so fast it's already cooled down, and that's why that bearing was a little bit harder to drive in. And but that's basically it right there. She's all in there, nice and clean. Got the new seal for the back side. Uh, once we get the shaft ready, we'll show you how we're gonna put that together. Um, I wanted to point out that this is what I use. Um, I use an FAG bearing on this side, uh, 6009, and on the other side, I used a, a Nachi bearing, uh, which is basically a 6009C3. It doesn't have a seal on either side. Point out, um, this is my my slide hammer to pull the bearings. Um, this you can get at Harbor Freight if you need one of these. This is a tool for pulling seals. Um, what I'm, I'm going to let you guys know is that we're not doing the upper bearings due to the fact the only reason we're changing the lowers is because this shaft had inner race problems and it was spinning on the shaft and eating the shaft. So the bearings will be superheated and I don't want to take the risk of using an old bearing. Um, these bearings up here, they don't have many miles on them. And you can hear they're nice and quiet. Um, otherwise, if you had to pull these bearings, you'd basically have to pull all this stuff off, pull this upper support, and you'd have to pull a ring on the inside here, right here, and then put some heat on this in order to pull this off. Sometimes it's easier to unbolt the shaft, the shaft with the support, with the bearing in it, and then on the other side, you basically take off these clips here and pull the shaft out the other side. Then on the inside here, you'd have to pull the, the retainer on this bearing, give it a little heat, use the slide hammer, and pop this one out as well. But like I said, the only reason we're doing the bearings and seals on this is because these bearings were eating the lower shaft. Okay, we are just about to assemble the lower drive shaft that we have had machined and set up. Uh, we put it in the freezer to get the diameter of the shaft down a little bit. I don't want to hit the dang thing. And then we're going to put her up in the place here. Get her all the way to this side, just like such. And then what we'll do. I'm going to take you to the other side. The 
because our tolerance is an interference fit, we're gonna slightly heat up the inner race just a little bit. You gotta do it kind of quick so you don't melt the seal. We gotta get the disc on along with it. It's kind of a trick. Okay, we got her part way on. And now what we'll do is we'll, we're just gonna tap it or actually what works really good is if you can get the screws uh, started on the back. Get the screws started. And then we walk it on. take a ratcheting wrench and we'll just walk it on and because it's a slight interference it'll pull it right on okay we got this together by putting the screws on the back pulled it in uh, we actually, by pulling it in and having it close to size on size, uh, we had the shaft in the refrigerator or in the freezer, put a little heat to the inner race, and most of it went on. But because of its slight interference fit, it pushed the shaft towards the other side. So in order to get the C-clip on on this side, and we're not talking a really hard interference, it's very slight. We used the block of wood on this side with a with a hammer and uh, gave it a few taps uh, but the reason we're going to that is because we're using one of Barnaparts bearing lockers uh, which will expand the inner side of this just the slightest amount a couple thousandths and uh, cause that uh, inner race to lock on that shaft now what we're going to do is we're going to put the c-clip on this side get that buttoned up and uh, start assembling some of the gears and stuff on this side. Okay, we got the shaft in place. Clip on the other sides in, and I'm gonna put our adjuster on. I like to put the adjuster on first. So basically you put long part of the spring, get it on there like that. Take a flat screwdriver. Basically just like that and push the spring back and then we can have the adjuster. We'll just pull the adjuster out of the way. Um, putting the spring on the top. Um, oh, you can see the note on, note on here that you can see that I welded these. Um, <clears throat> we put a new bushing in here. But uh, we like to tighten up the space between the washers, so we left actually a little bit of the shoulder and works really good for, for tightening that up. But see, we'll put that on there. Get the bottom gear. In place like that. We'll put this in here like this. And we'll get this started a little bit and then Best thing to do is just pull that out of the way as you slide this on like that. And that's basically how she sits, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in these here. 
So the next step, gonna be bringing the washer on the top. Putting the C-clip on. And we have just enough room in there. You can kind of hear the room. This is all tensioned out nice. Um, put our little uh, Speedo pickup back in there before we forget that we didn't have it in there. <clears throat> then I'm going to go ahead and put on the um, the other gear pack for the reverse. And be sure you have your washers. On there. Hang that right on there. Just keep rotating until she lines up and she falls back on. And that's basically the reverse. And then the shift linkage will go on next. internals. Uh, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to put on that clip and um, that should snap right on. All right we don't have the shocks in the skid uh, but what we did is uh, the shocks went out for service so the front arm is was completely collapsed and the rear arm was like semi-collapsed. You can stick the skid in the track, pull the skid back Drop the arm, and the arm will swing through just past the drives. And once you get the arm up above the drives, then you can set the cross shaft in and bolt up the front. Now with basically no shocks and no spring tension, we're going to drop the rear down, and we're just going to put the uh, bolt the skid in and wait for the shocks to come. All right. I got the whole chain case together. Um... Next thing I want to do is uh, adjust the chain tension, bring it in finger tight, and then I usually bring the nut, so it's just touching. Take a little sharpie, and I'll put a line on there, basically, and then I can turn this back one and a half turns. there and then I go half turn back and then I'll lock the I'll lock it on there just like a couple 14 millimeters no, just give this thing a nice little snug it up like such you'll notice on here that there's just a little bit see that's why it's a turn and a half you just need enough that if you have a little bit of backlash so you don't need pressure on there the spring is holding the pressure so the next thing we're putting on is going to be the cover and you can see on this one, um, she's all been rebuilt with the gasket because uh, we had leaking problems and that's a gasket from Barna Parts. So we're gonna drop this on, make sure the reverse and everything is in there. And the reverse is all the way to the back. And basically you just drop it on and you'll feel around a little bit. And it'll fall right on the pins. you're in the right spot. Yep, this 
just like that. You can feel it kind of, you got to kind of feel around with it because it's got to slide those two dowel pins. I'm going to go ahead and put a few screws in here. B. You can put a little Loctite on there if you want. Um, I'm in these things quite often, so um, I don't put any Loctite. I've so far I've never seen any fallout uh, due to just normal driving. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these bolts in and then I will come right back and uh, talk about how I do these. Normally they say, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's like 12 to 14 foot pounds. I have had issues with the bolts stretching. Uh, so what I like to do is I bring them in hand tight and I just give it a little bit more than hand tight There's a gasket there. You can tell when this is bottomed because This actually the gasket compresses and these this gap will close and it can't go any tighter So you basically can just go through Get everything hand tight and then just maybe give it another quarter turn You'll feel you're gonna be probably more like 10 foot-pounds when you're done but if you want to run it to spec, go ahead and run it to spec, but be aware that as you're torquing them, they will stretch and you may have to get new bolts every single time you take it apart. Just a recommendation. So. All right, all the bolts are in. And what I like to do is I like to just bring them in until they're all snug and I work them. I go crisscross, make sure the thing's nice and flat and I work it down. I work it till it's nice and down tight. You know, you can you can actually see it if you look behind where the washer, or the, not the washer, but the flat part of the cover goes. You can see it walking down, and it'll get to a point where the gasket on the back of the cover is making a really good seal. You know, and you just stagger back and forth. And, you know, make sure it's. Make sure it's down. And at this point, you're just going, you know, you can you can feel them stop and bottom. You know. Nice thing about this T handle is you really can't. It's not they're not made to be like really torqued super tight because of the design of the T handles. Um, you know, you can't really, like with a torque wrench, you can get some good leverage on it. Alright, so basically, once you get to that point, and you can see it's down tight, like I said, I just go just a little bit more. Maybe once they're snug and set, I'll just go quarter turn. And you can feel it, it's tight. I mean, they're, they ain't coming out. Like I said, I think that, I don't know if I just had a bad batch of screws at one time, but I've had them stretch, just like I said, quarter turn from, from tight. You can feel it, I mean, you know, and like I said, with this T-handle, it flexes so you can feel the, the tension on it and it, it can't be overdriven and I think what's happening is that spec might be a little too off or maybe the torque wrench isn't right on the money you can feel when you go back through there are tight yeah so that's how I do that part of it I'm gonna go ahead and put this lower pipe on here I'm gonna put this pipe on here, put the strap back on. Yeah. 
kind of see off to the side here there'll be a we have to put this clamp back on which basically goes from behind like this like that you can kind of see how it kind of goes together that and then we'll tighten that thing up there that's basically what holds those pipes in place uh, we're on this side we're gonna put the reverse mechanism and stuff back together um, like I said before I do that and put the the, um, the reverse gear and the mechanism in uh, I'm gonna fill up my oil I like to I like to bring it to about you know, half to three quarters of the sight glass. It's roughly about uh, 10 ounces. So I got these little, and I run full synthetic. I'm not gonna bore you with putting the oil in, but basically, you put the oil in through that hole again bring it to about three quarters half to three quarters make sure your sled's level and we'll come right back okay we have the oil tank filled up like i said the recommended level um, we're going to put in the little gear sprocket make sure it's all clean and lubed up good you want to make sure that this is turned all the way counterclockwise so the shift forks and the reverse gears all the way to the back and then as you put in your your little spring and your button the little notch goes on the back like such And if it's in the right spot, it'll pop right in, but of course, it's not cooperating for me. Let's try that again. push her down there we go and when you put your little your little spring and your retainer in there it's got a detent in it you know you're in the right spot when it basically drops right in now another important thing is when you put the reverse in the mechanism it's going to be slightly canted to the clockwise side so what you do is bring that in there And uh, basically, you can feel the it should drop right into the teeth of the one too many off. That's not the right direction. So we're gonna, yeah, you're gonna be, and you can see it's kind of canted forward. See, what's going to happen is you're going to put a little bit of pressure on it, and you, that'll keep your bolts in. But it has to be, what that does is when it's in the off position, or the forward position, it keeps a little bit of pressure on that gear and that detent to keep it all the way shifted out. If you go the other way, uh, it wants to pop it out. So what we'll do is we'll put those bolts back in with the shield on there. Now this comes off this side here. So what you like to try to do is um, rotate it and put one in. 
pick any one you want. Sometimes it's easier just to do the one you can see and start that thread that'll help hold it. And it's it's got a little bit of pressure, not a ton, but it's got a little bit of pressure. You know, so, so get one started. Let's try that again. And as you get the other one started, you'll have to just kind of, you only put it in three, four threads. And then, so you can get your other bolts lined up. Make sure that this comes up over the top through the notch. Um, and then we'll uh, start hooking up the rest of the stuff, topping off the oil, things of that nature. We'll come back to that. All right, so I have to finish uh, removing the oil on here. And I just wanted to point out that there's a five millimeter um, you can see it's the first one right here. It actually looks like it's sticking down a little further. So that has to come out. And then the oil filter's right there. And I usually, I have this oil filter cup that slides right on there. I can run a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench on the back, pull the oil filter, and drain that plug. There's also a little copper washer on that drain plug that can be replaced. It comes in a Yamaha kit. Um, this is an Arctic app, but I'm putting Yamaha products on it because uh, that's what I work with. Uh, Yamalube, uh, full synthetic, 040. And um, I just wanted to show you, you know, it's it's quite easy to get in there and, and do the oil change. And, and with these lower panels off, it makes it so much easier. That's why we do these inserts, put screws in. It makes servicing it just such a joy compared to what it could be fighting over the top of the panels and slicing your arms and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and drain this out and put the new stuff in. Well, we're to the point now where we're going to put the heat shields on. Put the silencer on and um, one thing that we did do is um, on the turbo here itself uh, let me just tip that up a little tiny bit um, some of these screws that are behind are really tough to get to because they're a torque screw you know they're tough to get to so i'm going to replace a couple of them that are easier to get to for service work um, you could replace them all to a hex. Um, they can be uh, quite a quite a pain in the butt to try to get the things out. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, put the silencer on. Right here, this big boy. Put the bottom piece on. And then bottom. Got to kind of line up all the little rubber grommets that the thing slides into. And then you just kind of drop it right on. Just like that. She slides right on. And then I take the gasket and make sure it's the correct orientation. And the square tab is down and matches the square uh, tab area. You bring that right behind. You can hold it with the little finger, finger deal here. Like that. Let me tip this up a little bit so you can see better. It's like that. Um, you can take a couple, couple screws and you know, kind of get them started to hold your gasket in place. Just like that. Then you don't have to hold on to your gasket. We're going to go through and put all those screws on. Tighten them up, and then uh, then I'll start putting uh, put the rear portion of the heat shield on first, and then the front portion. And basically, that is putting back the the turbo uh, silencer 
and heat shields. It's relatively easy. Worst part of it is the screws. If you had different screws, it would work out much better. And um, we'll go from there. I'll, I'll give you a little shot of it completed uh, with the screws in place. And then once with the shields on. You can see that I got all the bolts tight. And then the two that are tough to get to, we replaced. We're going to put the heat shield on. And there's that spring right there. Um, you have to hook that on with a, I usually use a spring tool, hook that on once everything's in place and the screws are in. And uh, we'll go on to the heat shields next. I'll put those on. This is the first one to go on is the back one. Basically it just sets on there. And then there's some bolts and washers that go in here. We'll get those. And then the other one goes over the top. There's two screws here and a couple there to hold it in place. And I'll come back to that once we have that put on. Heat shields are all on. When you put on the back one, just thread them in a few threads uh, so you can float this around because this needs to be moved around to get all the screws lined up. Once all the screws are in, a few threads, tighten down the front, tighten down this, tighten down that. Next thing we're going to do is uh, plug in all the wiring and start working on the uh, rollover bypass, which basically we're just going to run a hose up here. It makes a nice little loop, comes down right here and vents out down by the running board. We can zip tie it to the foothold and I'll show you what that looked like when it's done. It's much easier to just show you after. And then the bypass was taken off and a plug was put in uh, just to plug the original bypass. What happens is sometimes, actually quite often, the bypass freezes, blows the tank seal, and it's just not, it's just not a great design. Now they updated it to heated, but we still had issues, people on the website um, having problems with blowing them. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I fought it. I tried to do a catch can. I tried to work with the heated rollover and I gave up after blowing the tank seal three times when it gets cold. Um, so I bypass them now. This is for me, it's the best. I mean, you literally have to have this thing upside down running. And if you're gonna be in that kind of you know, environment, then I would recommend a, a true rollover uh, valve system, electronic, um, and um, there's a, a guy on our site that that makes it, um, and that would what I would suggest. And if you have any questions about that, just put a comment down in the comment section, and I'll reply to it and give you a link to that person. I wanted to show you the finished product of the rollover bypass. Basically, it's just a vent for the oil tank. Zip tied up here. Goes down, keep a nice tight loops to keep the condensation and air moving out without it freezing. It's got a little bevel down here. Let it stick underneath, maybe. I usually keep it a half inch. I don't want too much hanging down because it could catch snow dust and have a little frost ball on it. Then I also put a little slot in it just in case something would get in there and freeze up. Then I wanted to also touch on, you know, making sure we put back our foot guards with the torque screws, um, the clutch guard, brake guard <clears throat> for your foot. Uh, there's two 8 millimeter screws there, there's one Torx here, and one Torx up here, also on the oil tank side, same principle, but there's only one guard, it's just a foot guard, two Torx here, two Torx underneath on the bottom.